Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to my guide to Doma Castle, the level 67 dungeon accessed through the Stormblood 4.0 main scenario quests. This dungeon rewards item level 282 weapons, armor, and accessories, including one free item specifically for your current job upon completion. The final boss also has a chance of dropping himself as a minion. This dungeon is broken up into several trash pools, some environmental hazards, and three bosses. To skip to a specific boss, please check the description of the video for time skips. At this point, you should really be used to dealing with Garland-type mobs, so just mind you that, like Bardem's Metal, mobs will likely rip through your tanks if you aren't prepared for this dungeon, so consider taking these pulls a bit slower. The only thing of note in the first set of trash is that as you approach the final trash pull, a gunship will fire AoEs at you until you actually run up and aggro it, so be wary of those AoEs that it produces and the damage that comes out of the Colossus mob right beforehand. Once the gunship and the adds are dead, head on up to the first boss. The first boss is the Magitech Rearguard. This boss is basically just a bunch of AoEs that come from all angles. Garlean Fire shoots one or two progressive AoEs in whatever direction the boss is facing when he uses it. The Magitech bits on the west side of the arena fire line AoEs, and the Rearguard mines that spawn from the north and south sides just wander across the arena, only exploding if you actually touch them. Just don't touch any AoEs or the floating mines, and you'll win. Simple as that. The trash on the way to the second boss starts with just some Pugnax and a Vanguard. After this, several cannons are set up to fire in line AoEs as you approach, so make your way through the outdoor alleyways and fight mobs just outside of these AoEs and you're good to go. Clear out the next two trash packs and move on to boss number two. The second boss is the Magitech Hexadrone, which can be a hilarious boss if done wrong. Outside of its standard AoEs, including a split damage AoE, it also summons tons of trip mines that stretch across the arena. After a brief arming period marked by a tether, they will fully arm and become ground AoEs. Touching them will knock you back very far, definitely sending you flying into other tripwires and potentially causing your death. Since there can be tower AoEs that you need people to stand in or split damage AoEs need to stack for, and these can get cut off by those trip mines, getting people to react quickly to the trip mine locations is essential for victory. Even with a few screw-ups, don't expect to have too hard of a time with this one. The trash leading up to the third boss is mostly just ninja mobs that gang up on you. There is a little mini boss before the final boss, but it's just the Magitech spider like the one from Balesar's Wall, the second boss, though he does spawn a few more ninja mobs as well while attacking you. Finish them off and move on to the final boss. The final boss of this dungeon is Grinwat, who has been souped up with lots of Magitech toys that he'll introduce to you immediately. He has a tank buster called Chainsaw, which he channels in one place over several seconds. After he uses Chainsaw on the tank, the tank can just move away from it as this allows you to avoid its damage completely. He also has a minigun that he will fire at random party members, which hits in a line. So if it's targeting you, make sure not to stand in front of, behind anyone, or near any party members at all, so that you're the only one taking the damage. He also has a marker AoE that follows a player for a brief second, before dropping a proximity AoE the party should move away from. You can just drop this AoE towards one of the corners of the room. Finally, he has a marked AoE that players should just avoid stacking up with. The main mechanic of this fight are the four saw blades he will keep summoning over and over again in different patterns. After a long wind-up time, these dash across the room, dealing massive damage and knocking back anyone they hit. Even just standing near one after it is placed on the field can deal some damage every second or so. You basically just dodge the AoEs from the first part of the fight while also avoiding these saw blades. He even uses the trip mines from the second boss at one point, so you'll need to make sure to handle the proximity AoE, the spread AoE, and the trip mines all at once, which isn't too bad. It's a lot going on, but it's really, again, nothing you haven't dealt with before. So just keep a cool head, and the fight will go fast enough. Thank you for watching my guide to Doma Castle. Be sure to check out my other dungeon guides. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned for everything Stormblood. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.